Hey there folks, Mr. G here with another educational video. Today it's the end of our unit on chemistry, our final lesson on KMT, and we're going to be talking about how KMT can not only explain the phases and changes of phases and changes of state, um, but as well as other physical changes. So again, name at the top, block, day two, period one, and the date today is going to be December 11th. This is page number nine. The first thing we're going to talk about is dissolving. So a solid dissolves in water, the individual particles spread out in between the water molecules. So maybe you've done this before if you've poured sugar into a hot drink, like um, maybe something like coffee, or if you've ever done like instant hot chocolate, if you ever poured those packages, those like dust packages, that dissolves into the water here. So if you had solid sugar, like a sugar cube, and there's these liquid water particles around it, dissolving, what happens is these particles get in between the sugar molecules, so they're able to squeeze in between, or even just the attraction between the water and the sugar allows them to pull it apart. And over time, the sugar cube disappears as all of the sugar particles spread out in the entire, uh, in the entire solution. So this is a sugar-water solution or a sugar-water mixture. Right? We've got particles all mixed throughout here. Now one thing to note, dissolving is not the same as melting, so this sugar isn't melting inside of the water, the particles are just spreading out. Melting only occurs when we have a solid piece, not when we mix it with something else. As it turns out, sugar dissolves faster in hotter water. That's because the water molecules have more kinetic energy, so they can get in between the sugar molecules faster, and they can basically run into the sugar molecules faster with more force, which allows them to be sort of pulled apart from their solid shape at the start. Now diffusion is something that's very similar, but this is what happens usually in liquids or gases where we have a high concentration to low co concentration. So it doesn't necessarily have to be dissolving. So for example, you could have a high concentration of particles in one specific spot, but over time they're going to evenly spread out. So for example, if you've ever cooked something, Right? You might be able to smell what you're cooking in the kitchen right away, but the people further away might not be able to smell it for another couple of minutes, as that smell, which is all concentrated around maybe the stovetop, spreads out into the entire room. Now, KMT explains this by saying that particles are bouncing off of each other. So these smell particles, or whatever molecules are causing the scent, are mixing with the air molecules in the back, and since all uh, in the rest of the room. Now, as they do, the particles are bouncing off of each other, moving in all sorts of random directions, and after a while, after bumping into each other randomly for a while, they end up moving into more of the open space. So, over time, these random bumps just move them in all sorts of other places until they're all spread out. Now, sugar molecules actually undergo diffusion when it's dissolving. So you'll notice at the start here, these sugar molecules that have come off of the solid sugar are all kind of around the solid sugar. But over time, the sugar dissolves and the particles spread out. The next thing we're going to talk about is thermal expansion. So this is where solids, liquids, or even gases can expand when they are heated and contract when they are cooled. By expand, we mean increase in volume. Contract means decrease in volume. Now solids do this a little bit. They expand and contract a little bit as the particles vibrate more or less. So if they're not vibrating very much, they can be right next to each other. If they're vibrating a little bit more, there can be a bit of a larger distance. So the, the thing can actually expand or contract a little bit. There's an example of this if you've ever seen cracks in the road. Oftentimes this is due to frost heaving. So that's where the ground itself, so the concrete itself, doesn't actually expand or contract very much, but the ground under it does. So as it heats up or cools down, it expands and contracts, and that can cause the concrete itself to crack. Liquids do this a little bit more than solids because the, the particles can move further apart or closer together a little more freely. They're not quite as rigidly um, stuck together, so they can do a little bit more of expansion and contraction. But the real stars at this are gases, which can expand or contract indefinitely if they're not in a rigid container. So if you ever have like a balloon, maybe you can try this at home. If you blow some air into a balloon and you stick it into the fridge, you'll notice that after a while, even though the end is tied off and there's the same amount of gas, it will actually shrink a little bit. And that's because the gases aren't moving as fast. They're not spreading out as much because they're not moving as quickly. And you could do the same thing if you were to take that and then put it back in room temperature 
or I don't know, maybe take it into the bathroom and have a hot shower, right? And the air gets warm in there, you'd notice the balloon gets a little bit bigger. This is also related to gas pressure. So when gases are heated or, or, or cooled in a sealed container, the inside of the container can have a different pressure than the outside. And this is true not even just for heating and cooling, but also if you have a high pressure or a pressurized container. Like uh, if you've ever seen spray bottles, those are pressurized. So if it has high pressure, that means the gas particles are heated and moving faster and they have more frequent high energy collisions with the walls of the container. So what that means is the walls of your container here, the stuff on the inside is moving really fast and bashing into the walls here with a lot of energy. But the particles on the outside, the gas on the outside, aren't hitting the, the edges with the same amount of force. So that means that the walls of your container are getting pushed out by all of the violent energy of the particles inside. If the pressure gets too high, the walls can't hold it, they can't apply enough force to keep it in there, and they'll explode. Low pressure, on the other hand, is the opposite. So if our gas particles are cooled, they move slowly, they have less frequent, low energy collisions with the side of the container. So again, if we think about the outside, the particles of air in the outside are hitting it with a certain amount of force, with a certain amount of frequency. But if the particles are on the inside, aren't moving very fast at all, then the reverse of our high pressure con uh, container happens, where instead of the walls being pushed out by the extra force on the inside, now they're actually being sucked in because the force of the air particles on the outside of our container is bigger than the inside. So they're actually getting pushed in. And eventually, this suction force can actually cause something called an implosion, which is the opposite of an explosion. So an, an explosion is where it explodes out. An implosion is where it explodes inwards. So basically the walls of the container collapse inwards, and this is because of this suction force. I'll include a few videos of explosions and implosions, so you have an idea of what this looks like. But in terms of our KMT picture, low pressure is where we just have a few particles, they're not moving very fast, and they're not going to be hitting the walls very often or very hard. But our high pressure particles are moving with a ton of speed in all sorts of different directions, and they're smashing into the walls with a lot of force which pushes out on the walls, and if that push gets strong enough, it'll explode. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you try out these practice questions at the bottom here. Answers are posted on Teams, as well as any other practice questions that have been posted there, any other homework, other videos, and I will see you all in the next video.